my purpose, I would say is to make a change, to open doors for others and to set new standards and just focus on always doing the right thing, cutting out the noise and just focus on doing the right thing, making an impact and opening doors for others to come. Uche Pedro is the founder of Bella Niger, one of the fastest growing digital media businesses on the continent, covering entertainment, fashion and lifestyle. Pedro started Bella Niger as a blog in 2006, simply as a hobby, while being a student in Canada. She returned home to build it into one of the most influential trend-watching media brands online with over 1 million unique visitors every single month, making it a dominating force in not only Nigeria's digital landscape, but globally. I grew up in Lagos, and I like to say that I am a Lagos girl by the way of Enugu. So my dad is from Enugu, but I grew up in Lagos. And it was just so wonderful with my dad and my mom and my sisters. And it was just a beautiful childhood, a very nurturing environment. You know, there are some things that you don't realize growing up, but when you become an adult, you begin to see clearly. My parents instilled like the best values ever in us, um, from confidence to just the value of academics, the value of hard work, the value of honesty as well. So it was just cool, it was fun growing up with a house with many, many, many girls. I have five sisters wow. and one brother, so very, very interesting. What, how do you feel that growing up, you said they armed you with a lot of confidence, yes. academics was very important. Was there any particular route that you thought, I'm probably going to end up doing this? Or did they impose any profession on you being a young African female? I would say they didn't impose anything, but definitely I had a lot of career goals growing up. So I can remember specific times when I wanted to be a pilot. Wow. I, I wanted to be an aeronautic engineer. Nice. I wanted to be just so many different things. And you know, I was always a very good writer. Mm -hmm. So I was someone that I got like A's all through school in English and everything, but mainly because of like my imagination. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a tennis player at some point. <laughs> I know everybody loves Serena Williams now, yeah. but I like to say I loved her first. <laughs> <laughs> I have been a fan since like the very early days, since she was a teenager and I was a child basically and I wanted to be a tennis player at some point I used to play so just different goals but each time I wanted to do something my parents were always on board so when I wanted to be a tennis player they bought me a racket they bought me balls they got me tennis lessons so just very encouraging and I think it's such a fantastic it was such a fantastic basis for where I am today mm -hmm. I think you've had though, quite a diverse experience growing up. I know you were born um, and raised partly in Nigeria, yes. but then you moved to Canada for your university yes. um, studies. Which university did you attend? I went to Western University. Right. I went to the Ivy Business School there. Right. So and what type of student were you? <laughs> I was a very, so I'll say this, I was a very good student. So I graduated with distinction from what is a very competitive business program. However, I do remember in class, so in class they would cut off external internet and we would have only like the intranet so obviously you couldn't go on external websites but before class I would load up my laptop with like celebrity websites <laughs> music so in between class when I was bored I'm like mm, what's happening what's the latest you know mm -hmm. updates and all that so I was always very into pop culture mm -hmm. but I was also a very good student so when you look at um, the transition from being raised in Nigeria to moving to Canada I'm living there. You were interested in pop culture. Yes. What was it like in terms of the cultural differences and how did that mold you as a young woman? I would say Canada is like a happy place. Like if you, I, I went there as a teenager by myself. So I know when some of my younger siblings went abroad to school, like my parents followed them to school. But mm -hmm. me, I literally got on the plane and I went there myself, landing there as a teenager. But that's where it goes back to the values discussion. So mm -hmm. they had already instilled a lot of good values in me that I didn't even know at the time, but it was just embedded there. So when there were like some temptations and vices, I didn't go down that route. I just concentrated on school, just focused on what I was there to do, had a good time. I was very involved in a lot of like, you know, associations, you know, African Students Association, things like that. And I just did what I was meant to do. But Canada is a very lovely 
lovely place. Mm. I loved it. I never faced any harsh challenges per se. I would say maybe the only thing was that at the time, the system wasn't sort of used to non-Canadians in the working system. So mm. oftentimes, like after university, when I would go for interviews, they'll be like, oh, you're not, you're not Canadian. They just didn't, you know, oh, you're not a permanent resident. So the concept of like student visa and work permits was very, very foreign to them. Mm -hmm. So in some places, I think it's more about racism, but at that point it was more about maybe the institution, the way the system was built wasn't like the best system for international students. But eventually I did get a job and it is much easier now for foreign students there. So I'm happy about that. So in terms of your university life, yes. obviously you had your studies, yes. you were quite a good um, I was. study worm, <laughs> you, know, you were going for it with your books, yes. but then how did you now translate all of the skills that you acquired in your student life yes. to now become a blogger? Where did that transition come? Well, that's an interesting one. Around the time I was graduating from university, the blogging seem internationally was emerging. So there were quite a few blogs coming up, especially in the States and mm -hmm. not so much across the continent of Africa. Right. When, how did you come up with the name Bella Niger? Honestly, it was just like a momentary decision. So, you know, when you're signing up to have a blog at that time, they're like, okay, what is the name? And I've always loved the word Bell which means beautiful and Bella means beautiful in Italian mm -hmm. and obviously the Niger slang wasn't as popular as it is now I think mm -hmm. at this point it's Niger all the way <laughs> it wasn't as popular at that point but you know I always liked it it was cool so honestly it was just like a split second thing like oh okay Bella Niger and today you know it's 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 worldwide so it's incredible that that split second decision has translated into this global brand. Pedro is one of those rare species of Nigeria that have added color to being Nigerian. She was featured on the Oprah Winfrey show, Beauty Around the World, in February 2010, along with stars like Jessica Simpson and Ling Ling. In 2014, she was named in Forbes list as the 30 most promising young entrepreneurs in Africa. Her other entrepreneurial pursuits include her company Bainstone, which was chosen as one of the 50 high potential Nigerian SMEs and awarded a British Airways Opportunity Grant. Did you ever think though, when you came up with the idea of Bella Niger, yes. um, did you ever foresee it growing into such a global brand, such a big, impactful brand to the millennial generation? Well, I'll say this, I, at, at the back of my mind, I always knew that there was some greatness that was going to come out of me. I always kind of envisioned that it would be as a career woman. So I envisioned myself in the power suits, going for the board meetings. I didn't even imagine entrepreneurship. So I knew I would get there. I didn't know my path. So I'm just grateful to God that I was able to get there while doing what I love. And I don't have to wear the conservative power suits. Yeah. I can look cool like I do now. Every time. And yes, yeah, just enjoy it. So I always knew I would get there. And you know, I worked in corporates in the corporate world in Canada in the UK in Nigeria and if I had stuck with that I know I would still have been at the top of this because I was yes. already doing really well but you know my true purpose I believe I found with Bella Niger and with digital media and with technology and I'm so happy with that path. So how have you seen the growth? I yes. mean, what impact has it had in terms of you as an entrepreneur, yes. but also um, the vision for the brand? What, what, how has that impacted you? So at first, as I said, it was just a thing. But as time went on, one thing that I would say I did well was creating a structure and not just being so insulated yes. with the vision. I brought other people in and I'm so blessed for what they brought into the vision. So some of the early people who worked on Bella Niger, who are fantastic award-winning people in their own rights right now, like, you know, Ijoma Ndeku, Ink Eze, um, Wanao Dobang, and so many other people who formed that foundation of, of BN. And we brought in other people, and by the time we brought minds together, we're able to build a structure and build a company that has grown, and it's continuing to bloom each and every single day, 12 years later. Wow. <laughs> yes.
while content such as weddings, fashions and events and other interesting stories might get a significant portion of the shine on Bella Niger's huge platform, the Bella Niger story is about Pedro's commitment to the community around us. From the Bella Niger Community Centre to the hashtag BNDoGood and long-standing partnership programs which consistently support a wide variety of not-profit and social impact driven organisations. Pedro is passionate about giving back and fighting for the less privileged in society. Outside of Bella Niger, I know that you've built quite a very strong um, presence in terms of the digital space. Yeah. But in terms of um, also giving back, I know that's something that's extremely close to your heart. Um, please share with us some of the advocacy work that you actually do with Bella Niger. It's a strong belief for me that we are here for a purpose, we're here for a reason, and we're here to make an impact in the lives of others. And sometimes people feel under pressure, like, oh, I can't do so much, so I will do nothing. But no, we don't look at it that way, and I don't look at it th that way. Mm. Even if it's one single person that you're able to have an impact in their lives, then it's powerful enough. So we do a whole rack of things, like right now, um, one, somebody in our community, we love our community, our Bella Nigerians, our BNRs, wrote to us that they had seen something on Facebook about some, you know, FGM, mm -hmm. um, female genital mutilation. We rallied together, we put up a story, and within 48 hours, the whole operation was stopped and the UNICEF had gotten involved. So that's just one example of the wow. power of our community and what we do. On another um, note, I was at the Obama Summit um, representing One.org, which is an org a great organization co-founded by Bono that does mm -hmm. a whole rack of stuff around the world, especially focused on girls' education. So that's what I was helping, just in terms of raising awareness. A, lot, a startling number of girls are not educated, and as I said, I have five sisters. One is a doctor, one is a musician, we have several entrepreneurs. Without education, nobody would be where they are today. So it's so critical that our girls and our women are empowered with education so they can be anything they want to be. Um, I think that's absolutely amazing. I think you really single-handedly set a trend for a lot of females that wanted to go into entrepreneurship because you were doing it when it wasn't a cool thing to <laughs> yes. do. Um, but when I read about your success story, and I think no one's really shy of that, we really never hear the actual struggles. Um, yeah. I think y your story is so strong. It seems like it almost happened overnight. Can you share with us some of the challenges that you've managed to survive against all odds um, that has made you the entrepreneur, the digital tech entrepreneur that we celebrate today? I would say, first of all, like one of the biggest things was that Bella Niger pioneered online monetization in Nigeria. So when we started, like within sort of like the Nigerian space, nobody there was really not much. So there wasn't, there several things that it was just blank air. <laughs> Let me just say, just thin air. And we had to go into that thin air and create value. And those structures are what a lot of like digital media properties use to monetize today. And for us right now, we're thinking of, so that I would say that was the biggest struggle. The biggest struggle was building, you know, it's easy to come into an industry and like, okay, these are the standards. So let's just follow what's going on or even improve on, what, on what's happening. But if you step in there and and there is nothing. So just being a pioneer, and then even with being a pioneer, a lot has changed. People don't realize that Bella and I just started before Twitter, mm -hmm. before Instagram, before Snapchat. Mm -hmm. So as we've been in operation, the world has changed around us. Yes. And thankfully, we're still growing really, really fast and we're even more relevant than ever. For example, you know, Bella Niger weddings, everybody loves. We have almost 3 million followers on Instagram. We have so many great brand relationships, so many activations. We launched um, BellaNigerStyle.com, um, which is our style platform last year. So I would say against all odds was creating something from nothing. And against all odds continues to be to remain relevant in an ever moving world. And I'll say a big part of it is, you know, also my husband has been such a huge factor um, with having somebody to bounce strategies off. Mm -hmm. When I was getting married, my mom was like, um, you know, because around that, around while we're dating, I quit my job to focus on entrepreneurship. What was the job that you were in? So I was working in strategic HR for an international chocolate manufacturer. Right. So, 
that was really interesting. I had worked for them in the UK and actually insisted on them transferring me to Nigeria because I really, really wanted to move back home. And so while my husband and I were dating, I decided to quit that job to focus on Bella Niger. And he was already an entrepreneur. So it was like, wow, two entrepreneurs coming together because it's, it's being an entrepreneur or a CEO, it has a lot of facets from even the emotional side to the just the grind yeah. as well but luckily for me he's ever supportive gives a lot of strategic support advice and just having someone to always bounce ideas off is just so fantastic well when you look back on your journey was there ever a time that you felt like this is not for me i give up i'm done with that <laughs> was there any moment that you just felt like i'm not going to do this anymore i mean those moments come and a lot of people reach out to me for advice and those moments come and you know life evolves so for me just with going from a fancy free person in her early 20s mm -hmm. to a mom of two and going from a company with just me to a company with you know over 20 people and you know hundreds of contributors millions of views around the world that escalates and that's a lot so definitely those moments come but as I tell people when I give them advice I also advise myself I'm like do you know what you can do this you're here for a purpose pick yourself up if you have so many things to do you just have to start so I just take it, so okay, what's, what's the problem? I make a list and I just go through the list one after the other and then eventually it will get done, so yeah. That's brilliant advice. I mean, something that you highlighted is obviously you were blogging at a time where there was no um, social media platforms like yes. Snapchat, Twitter and so yes. on. Um, but there are a lot of young digital tech entrepreneurs that are looking up to you and saying, how do I follow in the steps? of this media maven? How do I become or build a platform or build something in the technology space that is just as successful and lucrative as Uche Pedro? What would be your advice to them? Well, it's, it's, I would say first of all, get ready to work. Um, second, know that this is something you really want to do. Today, Bella Niger is a global digital media brand, media tech brand out of Africa, and that didn't happen by mistake. It happened with, first of all, for me, like prayer and spiritual life is really important. And it also happened with a lot of grit, a lot of focus, and a lot of learning. So you have to be prepared to learn. So even for me this year, I have quite a number of learning goals, because as I said, our industry moves really fast, and there's a technical side to it. People just look at the, you know, the easy breezy yeah. parts but there are a lot of technical aspects to it so for me it's a learning journey so I would say learn make sure that this is within your purpose otherwise it is not worth the effort technology is so key for us we have a whole team of developers that work in-house and that allows us to innovate really fast and that was something that we learned when um, over the years so for example Bella Niger Star was built completely in-house all the branding was done in-house etc and it has been so well received That's amazing so yes yeah, so that would be my advice for the emerging you know tech entrepreneurs out there especially in the media tech space Amazing advice. And I also noticed that throughout our conversation, yes. you always emphasize your purpose, your purpose, <laughs> your purpose. What do you feel is your purpose in life? And my purpose, I would say, is to make a change, to open doors for others and to set new standards and just focus on always doing the right thing, cutting out the noise and just focus on doing the right thing, making an impact and opening doors for others to come. Excellent. And when you look back over how far yourself and the Bella Niger brand has come over the past few years, what do you believe that the next couple of years will hold for you? What will the future look like for That's Bella That's a Niger? wonderful question. I'm so excited because the future is so exciting. It's so awesome. When we look at stats for Bella Niger or Bella Niger style or Bella Niger weddings, we see over a hundred countries. That means wow. the world's eyes are on Africa. We see people from all over the world. I mean, even starting with our, our friendly, you know, West African friends yes. like Ghana, mm -hmm. like 
our stats for Ghana are huge and then even crossing over to obviously the states the UK and even unexpected places like Malaysia and you know even in West Africa as well some countries where English is not their first language they're still locked on to Bella Niger as well as our social media channels so for us the future is very exciting we'll continue learning we'll continue innovating but most of all we'll continue pushing out a positive narrative mm -hmm. and a positive perspective and we will not lose sight of that I think in terms of your content online yes. I mean you are up to the minute 24 hours with content um, yes <laughs> what do you think are the areas that present the most amount of growth in terms of the online space with your content with our content I would say unique content so just things that things that not everybody is necessarily talking about. You know, there are some things that are just mainstream. Yeah. Everybody is just talking about them and it's easy breezy. Mm -hmm. But for us, it is searching beneath the surface. Like, what is the story beneath the surface? What is everybody not talking about, but maybe everybody should be talking about? And please, it doesn't have to be anything serious. Sometimes it's just lighthearted, just something funny, something sweet. We have something on Bell Niger called BN Sweet Spot. Sometimes just finding that story that will just put a smile on your face on any given day. So I would say unique, uplifting, positive content. And of course, like beautiful stuff, beautiful weddings, stylish people like yourself. I'll inspirational. Pay you later. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you do inspirational <laughs> stories and just there's so many fantastic entrepreneurs around the country, young, old, just sharing their stories each and every day. Mm. That's what we're looking at. Whenever um I have conversations with amazing women yes. that are achieving phenomenal things. I always ask this question, okay. can a woman have it all? Can she be phenomenally <laughs> successful in her business life and have a very fruitful and rich personal life as well? Do you think it's possible? That's such an interesting question and my answer will probably be very long. I would say define your own have it all. Yes. So in Nigeria or in a lot of places around Africa, I see when people say a woman's successful personal life, their successful personal life means married children. But mm -hmm. for some people, that's not necessarily it. So define your own success. And within your own definition of success, of course you can have it all in a sense, but I wouldn't say have it all in the way society defines it. So mm -hmm. define your own success, both personally and professionally, and just go for it. Just live your life free from a lot of like the societal constraints and mm -hmm. all the boxes boxes they try to put us on. Just live your life freely and happily and embrace your joy. That would be my, my take. From entrepreneurship to transforming the digital landscape and activism, Pedro continues to impact the Nigerian and African landscape with her far-reaching initiatives that seeks to bring to the fore social injustice and prejudice against those who are unable to speak up and fight for themselves, a cause she continues to fight for even to this day against all the odds. You can do this, you're here for a purpose, pick yourself up. If you have so many things to do, you just have to start. I make a list and I just go through the list one after the other and then eventually it will get done.